Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News. And I hate to see things that are historical to me or mean things to me be destroyed or let go to wreck and ruin. A group from Estill County is trying to save their theater. And we're still tracking some showers through the area out there tonight, and the winds will be howling through the nighttime hours and part of your Monday. I'll have the latest forecast. We'll have the very latest on an officer involved shooting that happened early Sunday morning in Lexington. WKYT News starts now. Thanks for staying up late with us tonight. I'm Christian Kennedy. One man is injured and two police officers are on administrative assignment tonight. The Lexington Police Chief tells us officers Wesley Farley and Christopher Mason were patrolling Berea Road last night when they walked past what they believed was a drug deal. And that's when one of the men involved, the chief says, tried to run the officers over with his truck. They fired shots and hit the driver. WKYT's Jordan Valines explains to us how the department is handling the shooting in our top story. Two Lexington police officers have been placed on administrative assignment after they were both involved in a shooting that took place around 4.30 Sunday morning. We're told that Officer Wesley Farley and Officer Christopher Mason were doing foot patrols on the Legacy Trail near Ironworks Pike when they came across a suspicious-looking scene. Two vehicles with several people inside were parked outside Berea Christian Church and were believed to be conducting a drug deal. But when the officers approached the vehicles... The white passenger car sped off, nearly missing the officers. As the officers attempted to make contact with the Toyota Tundra and the remaining subjects involved, the driver of the Tundra began speeding toward the officers. In order to stop the oncoming vehicle and protect themselves, the officers fired shots, hitting the driver, Joseph Kilburn. After the officers fired shots, the vehicle continued driving erratic erratically around the church lot before coming to rest against a fence. Police have not yet released where Kilburn was shot or how many shots were fired. Anytime we have an officer involved shooting, which is thankfully very rare in this community, we want to ensure a thorough examination of the facts. Kilburn is now charged with two counts of wanton endangerment and of fleeing or evading police. In Lexington, Jordan Beline, WKYT. Officers say Joseph Kilburn was conscious when he went to the hospital. They will not discuss the extent of his injuries. We're tracking a developing story out of Madison County tonight. Richmond police are searching for a man they say tried to rob someone on EKU's campus. In an email sent to students and staff, the emergency management department says the attempted armed robbery happened outside Clay Hall. We're told the man had a handgun. Police describe him as a black male with a medium complexion, about six feet tall, wearing a hat and a black and red jacket over a hooded sweatshirt. Police say he ran toward the Powell building, but they have not been able to track him down. EKU leaders say police did give the all clear about an hour ago. We will start off the work week on a pretty wet note. We saw almost an inch of rain earlier in downtown Lexington, and it looks like that rain will stick around for a little longer. Meteorologist Jim Caldwell is tracking those storms on the first alert defender. Yeah, plenty of activity rolling through the area today and a lot of wind associated with these showers. Tonight we're tracking mainly some lighter stuff sweeping through the area. It was uh, heavy from time to time, but most of that is rolling right on out of here. But we expect more showers into the day tomorrow for you. Winds, this is just the sustained wind activity that we have out there, and that's basically the constant presence of the wind. And we're talking 20, 25 miles per hour in many cases here in central Kentucky. In between those two, you factor in the wind gust, 37 mile per hour wind gust down in Richmond, 31 in Lexington coming in this hour. So we have some pretty strong wind gusts right now and more expected as we progress through the overnight. So a wind advisory really kicks in at 4 o'clock in the morning, though we're already experiencing some of the strong winds out there right now. And it runs through the day tomorrow all the way to 7 o'clock. So winds increase tomorrow. Cold blast also coming for midweek. That's going to help set up the snow chances as we go into Wednesday and also. So into Thanksgiving, we could be talking about some light accumulations, maybe a little more in other parts of Kentucky. We'll break it all down for you coming up here in just a few minutes. An early morning wreck on the Bluegrass Parkway killed one man and injured another. Police say a truck driving down the parkway in Woodford County went into the median and flipped into the oncoming lanes. 
We're told 20-year-old Jalen Tong died in the crash. The coroner says Tong was from Bardstown. Crews did rush another man to UK hospital. Fire crews in Lexington are trying to figure out what caused a fire to car wash this morning. Crews tell us they could see flames shooting through the roof of the former Premier Car Wash on New Circle and Russell Cave around 7 this morning. They were able to knock out the fire pretty quickly. We're looking at moderate damage just due to the nature of the building. Uh, it is an older bit of construction there. Uh, the fire had gotten up into the roof on us, so it, was, it had a, quite a head start on us. You might remember back in October, police found the body of Brian DePreda inside the empty car wash. Thomas Lucky, Joseph Sledge, and Kavion Thomas are charged with murder and robbery in connection with that death. We have an alert tonight for people in Franklin County. Crews tell us some customers in the Farmdale Water District are under a boil water advisory because of a water main break earlier today. This includes anyone in the Evergreen Market area. We're told the advisory will last at least 24 hours. A teenager acquitted on charges of killing his stepbrother last year is back in jail tonight. U.S. Marshals and Louisville Police captured Josh Young. Earlier this week, Young did not show up to court on a probation violation. Police arrested him on Woodgate Lane in the Hikes Point area. He's scheduled to be back in court December 15th. Funeral arrangements are now set for a former Lexington mayor. H. Foster Pettit was fishing in October when his boat capsized in the Louisiana Delta. He cut his leg during that accident, and the cut caused a life-threatening bacterial infection. Pettit was Lexington's mayor from 1972 to 1978. His funeral will be at 2.30 Saturday at the First Presbyterian Church on North Mill Street. He was 84 years old. Football players in Jefferson County could soon be a little safer on the field. Norton Healthcare offered the district a $150,000 grant to help pay for more than 200 helmets. Last month, we told you about our investigation into football <coughs> helmet safety across the state. In a rating system for helmets, we learned five stars means they are capable of taking a hit, and fewer stars are for less satisfactory helmets. The Courier Journal reports the district had many two star helmets. But the new helmets are four stars. The board is expected to vote Monday on whether to accept the grant. The Wildcats got a big win tonight on the hardwood. Montana State took on the Cats, and like UK's last four opponents, they left with a loss. Lee K. Howard's here with highlights from the game. You know, the Wildcats started slow in this game, but they sure finished strong in their fifth game of the season. Tonight, taking on Montana State, the Wildcats missed their first 10 shots of the game. Finally, Dakari Johnson gets the bucket to go four minutes into the game to break that scoring drought. And once they got going, they really got going. Devin Booker to Trey Lyles on the backdoor lob. Kentucky led Montana State 39-11 to 11 at the half. Kentucky had 11 steals. This time, it's Aaron Harrison going the other way for the high percentage shot. Cats had the 11 steals to go along with a season best 12 block shots. Willie Colley Stein with the block. Aaron on the run out. 14 points for Aaron Harrison. Kentucky would go on a 13 minute 29 0 run. Another big night for Booker here on the receiving end of that lob. He scored 18 to lead the Wildcats as Kentucky rolls 86 to 28. The 28 points are the fewest for a UK opponent in the shot clock era. We will hear what John Calipari has to say about his team's defense that's coming up a little bit later in sports. It's been closed for decades. Now, a group from Estill County is trying to save the Mac Theater in Irvine. The theater used to be one of the biggest attractions in town. Now it's just used for storage. Tonight, WKYT Sam Smith found out the River City players want to turn it into a multi purpose arts center. Construction on this building finished in 1939. Ever since, it's been owned by the same family. But since 1993, it's been closed and used as storage. Those days are coming to an end if the River City Players Organization gets its way by saving the Mac Theater. Uh, we hope to have here a uh, community center and a venue for community events, uh, theater, all types of performance art. Chair Susan Hawkins says a renovated Mac will bring a boost to the area. And we are looking at uh, hopefully revitalizing our economy and, and stimulating uh, reuse of our downtown core uh, through tourism. There's also an emotional attachment to the theater that residents like Penny West have from their youth. This is very important. 
everyone has, just about everybody has a memory. It'll take $75,000 to buy the building. With the purchase comes all the original elements of the theater, including two projectors from the 1940s. Hawkins and West say that will be money well spent. And I hate to see things that are historical to me or mean things to me be destroyed or let go to rack and ruin. About 10% of that $75,000 goal has been raised so far. The River City players will use fundraisers and grants to make it the rest of the way. In Estill County, Sam Smith, WKYT. Organizers say it'll cost $500,000 to renovate the building after they purchase it. Coming up, we're checking in with a group of lucky Lexington High School students. You may see those superstars on national TV Thanksgiving Day. Buffalo, New York says all of the city streets are now passable. Days after more than seven feet of snow buried some neighborhoods. The worry now is what happens to all that snow as rain falls on top of it and the temperature continues to climb. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo says they are preparing evacuation plans and the Red Cross is setting up shelters in case of flooding. A group of Lexington High School students are heading to the Big Apple tonight. The lucky members of the Paul Lawrence Dunbar High School Marching Band are about to experience a Thanksgiving they'll never forget. Thursday morning, they will be playing in the Macy's Day Parade in New York City. We're looking forward to it, not just for uh, the band, but I think all the families going are looking forward to it as well. This is an event that you just don't get to do very often. Uh, not only seeing the Macy's Parade, but being in it and being part of what's going on. Dunbar's last appearance in the parade was in 2007. An anxious community is waiting for a Missouri grand jury to make a decision whether to indict a white police officer for killing an unarmed black teenager. The decision was the focus of many church sermons in Ferguson this morning. Danielle Nottingham is in Ferguson. Church, I have asked, what will we do? Many who went to church in Ferguson Sunday got a special message with their sermon. We have varying opinions about the killing and indeed about all the actions by both the protesters and by the police. The community is on edge, waiting to see what happens once the 12 member grand jury makes its decision on whether to indict Ferguson police officer Darren Wilson. He shot and killed 18 year old Michael Brown in August. Protesters have demonstrated every day since the shooting. Some of the events have turned violent. Residents are bracing for more protests, regardless of what the grand jury decides. More than a thousand local law enforcement officers have received special training on how to deal with protesters. Local and national leaders are urging people to keep their demonstrations calm. We're calling upon our members, members of the community, to respond to this decision in a nonviolent fashion. The grand jury has been deliberating for more than three months. A decision could come any day. Danielle Nottingham, CBS News, Ferguson, Missouri. Once the grand jury reaches a decision, the prosecutor is expected to wait at least 48 hours before it's announced. There's no guarantee the grand jury will reach a decision this week. This Thanksgiving, the First Baptist Church of London is fighting hunger in their community and abroad. At their service this morning, church members hope to raise $100,000 to give to local and international charities. And they surpassed that goal, raising $106,000. It's an awesome feeling, but in the same sense, we know that it's nothing that we've done. It's been a God thing. Organizers say all donations came from church members. They didn't do any outside fundraising. One of the busiest shopping days of the year is less than a week away. Many will stand in long lines for hours, even days, in hopes of grabbing the bargain of the year. Some local businesses are asking shoppers to consider spending time in their stores as well as the big retailers. Rock Bottom Soap Company in London sells handmade soaps. The owner and his wife make them on their farm in Laurel County. And they say shopping locally can really help boost business. If someone spends $20 here, I go to their store, they spend $20, $30. We rotate that money in-house and it stays into our community. Some locally owned shops in southern Kentucky are offering special deals during the holidays.